I'll resume recording. So once again, hi everyone, I am Maureen Wenick. I am the Community Program Manager with the Face Syndrome Community. Um, tonight on our captain's meeting call, we have um, Jeannie Fogelson biniak and she is our Race for Face um, chairperson. She's also a board member of our organization. Um, and we also have uh, Ryan and Aaron Perry. They are the organizers of the Chicago Land, and you'll hear more about them um, and from them in a moment. Um, and then Jeannie, I'm going to say, did I pronounce your name correctly? Very close. So it's uh, Fugelston Benick. Benick. I always want yeah. to add that. I always want to add those extra vowels in your name, and I don't know why. There's a lot of them there. There is. Okay. So anyway, we do have an agenda for tonight. Why don't Jeannie, can we introduce our, let everyone introduce themselves because some families I'm not sure of. Yeah. So um, we don't have a lot of people on the call. So I thought we could all go around, just say who we are, how we're connected to the face of community, where you live. Um, and then just like a fun question, what's the best swag you've ever gotten at like a race or a fundraiser? So I said, as I said, I'm Jeannie fugleston Benick. I have a two and a half year old Ari who has H-A-N-S. Um, and so I was very fortunate to find the PSC when she was like three, four weeks old. Her dermatologist uh, printed out some things from the website um, and I got her first year. I didn't really get involved because, you know, the first year is a lot. But um, after the first year, um, it was just I found the community to be really helpful as we sort of navigated some stuff and then joined the board last year. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, and um, the best swag I'm going to say actually is from the Face Syndrome Community Virtual Conference a couple of years ago. There were fidget spinners and I just loved them and I still use my fidget spinner. Ryan, do you want to go next? So I'm Ryan. Um, I am, so my brother Connor has face and I'm currently organizing the first ever Chicagoland race for face um, for my Eagle project. So we obviously live in Chicago um, and my brother Connor was diagnosed with face like very shortly after birth. And ever since we've been relatively involved with the face syndrome community. Um, I am going to say that the best swag I've ever gotten from a race is um, the shirts. I like the um, drive like shirt. Kristen, you want to go next since you're on screen? <laughs> and then we'll call on somebody who's off. I heard you. Okay. Oh, we can't quite hear you though now. You're not close enough to the mic. Maybe. Where's the mic? I don't know. Oh, there you go. Can you hear it better? Yep. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> Uh, my name is Kristen O'Neill, and this is my daughter Willow. Uh, she's 11, and she has face syndrome. Was diagnosed a little bit later after birth because at first she was. Um, they told us she had Sturge Weber. Uh, so since then, we've been involved pretty uh, on and off with the face syndrome community. I am kind of with Ron. I always like the shirts and the medals from all the races. <laughs> oh, and we live in Tennessee, so we'll be in um, Johnson City, Tennessee, um, for our team. Uh, race your face. Awesome. Okay. How about uh, Amanda? Um, hi, um, I'm Amanda. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Um, my six month old was diagnosed with face syndrome shortly after she was born. Um, so we're fairly new um, to all of this and, and getting involved, you know, to raise awareness. Um, and um, I'd, I'd say t-shirts are my favorite kind of swag. Well, welcome. Um, and then we also have Shane. Uh, yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah, so I'm I'm from Brisbane, Australia. So um, we just we've got a six month old uh, little girl. Um, at our, uh, she had major heart issues when she was first born. She needed heart surgery, so um, she had hyperplastic aortic arch and also had uh, sublog subglottic hemangioma. So she was pretty much in ICU for the first two months of her life. Um, yeah, so as I say, she's six months old now and she's doing well. Touch wood. But um, yeah, obviously with the with the aorta, like the it's almost um, like a connective tissue disorder where the aortic wall's not that healthy. So we're just hopeful that you know she 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 can keep going as well as she is. And yeah, so that's why I'm here. We're glad to have you. Tough. Um, we have I think five or six other people who've signed up that couldn't make it tonight. Um. But we wanted to basically give you all a, just like, what is the history of the race for face, the purpose? And then um, Ryan and I are going to talk a little bit about um, the events that we have planned. Um, and then sort of what does it mean to be a captain? Um, and then how we can support you, uh, the face syndrome community can support you in your race. And then, you know, answer any questions that you have. So I think Maureen, if you want to, you are the best person to do the history. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So the history of the race for face started 11 years ago. Um, there was a couple of families up in Pittsburgh and they obviously wanted to do something to support the organization. They actually were board members and founding or uh, founding members of the organization. And so it started really casually with them. They, um, one of the individuals, I guess, had a restaurant. It was sort of by a park and they just would, you know, kind of organize a group of people, family and friends to, um, you know, go and, and kind of run through the park. And then they they met at the end of the, the race at the at Michael's restaurant and just, you know, celebrated. Um, and then it just really kind of grew and they would do raffles and they sort of made it a little bit bigger and they would get chips and and bibs and, you know, just it, it starts to be a, a bigger uh, event overall. Then COVID hit. And they obviously were not having an in-person event. Um, so we were then shifting as an organization. So in a way, the the organization was, um, it was really just the Pittsburgh event. And when COVID came, we shifted to a virtual event and we opened it up to you know everyone um, across the country or world. And so we started with the virtual event. We had great participation. Um, you know, throughout that time. And then we, once COVID made its way, you know, moved on out and we were able to do more of a hybrid event. We are encouraging more families to do in-person event and also virtual event um, where they can grab, you know, family and friends from wherever they are across the country and, you know, run a 5k or walk or whatever it might be. And it was fun because we had, we had um, received pictures from people walking and running on treadmills or hiking through mountains or running through the city or biking or whatever it was that they were doing to support the organization. So that is the history of Race for Face. Um, 11 years, here we are. And uh, we're just, you know, continuing to grow this um, this event. This is actually one of our larger fundraisers for the organization. Um, the money raised from this event goes towards supporting research our organization supports um, the FACE Syndrome Registry, which is where a lot of research comes out of. Uh, Dawn Siegel is at Stanford, and that's where the registry is currently. Um, so we do support her efforts there. Um, it also helps to just, you know, obviously support with our conferences that we have, our in-person conference. Um, they are every other year. Um, it helps with supporting our families, making sure that we have, you know, the resources that people need. Um, so it is really important. And we really appreciate everyone who is on here, who is willing to um, plan an event and to support the face syndrome community. Um, so as Maureen, you know, alluded to or talked about, there's a lot of different options. Um, there's the in-person event and Ryan and I are both planning um, an in-person event this year and we'll each talk about that a little bit more. Um, you can also do a virtual event, which is what I did last year where um, I just sent an email to friends, family, neighbors, told them about my daughter's story. Um, for a lot of them, it was the first time I'd actually shared most of like sort of 
what our journey had been. Um, and I was able to share how like the face syndrome community had been a, you know, a really great resource and source of support as we were trying to navigate um, sort of just her care and what she needed. Um, so it was a really great way to just reach out to people. And I was just like completely surprised by how many people signed up to run from all the way, you know, Washington state, California, where we live in Virginia, Florida. Um, and then people made additional donations too. Um, so I, you know, had a pretty modest goal initially and ended up raising a lot more money than I thought just because I sent an email and asked people, um, we did decide since the race uh, week fell on my daughter's second birthday that we would get together with our close family. Um, her grandparents were in town um, and we dressed up in Avengers outfits because we were like on a Marvel kick and we called our team Ari's Avengers and we did like a 10 yard dash. So like our race was very short because she was two um, and the first time through we let her win. And then we had a bunch of her cousins there that just basically took turns winning or doing like a three-legged race. And so um, it was just really informal, but it was a fun way to come together and and celebrate. Um, this year, uh, I'm going to have, uh, Ryan's going to talk to you about what he's doing. Um, I was actually going to do a virtual event only again, and then I got very inspired by Ryan. And so I'll tell you a little bit about the smaller scale um, event that I'm I'm planning after Ryan shares what he's doing. Yeah. So like I um, already said, I'm Ryan. Um, this fall, I'm going to be a sophomore um, in a, at high school, obviously. Um, and so I'm working on my Eagle Project, um, which is the highest rate you can get in Boy Scouts for those of you who aren't familiar. Um, so my brother, Connor, like I said, was diagnosed with face syndrome, like just before, just after birth. And ever since the face syndrome community has been super helpful to our family and I mean, I'm sure you're yours and many others. Um, so for my project, I wanted to kind of work with the face injury community and give back to them. So I'm organizing the first ever race for face in the Chicagoland area. So it's going to be an in-person event this fall in September. And so just some of the things that I'm doing, um, I'm going to talk about, and then also just kind of in a way the, not necessarily tips, but also like the best practices or also the kind of support that we can give you based on um, whether it's an in-person or virtual event. So um, one of the first things that I did and I think Jeannie did was secure a location. Um, so where we live in uh, kind of like suburban Chicago, forest reserves are one of the easiest places to do um, these races. So it was only like $150 and then we have the forest reserve for the day to use and do the race. Um, and then another big thing, especially with like just race giveaways or even helping to fund the um, race is getting donations from companies. And so there's a lot of, most companies have a form that you can fill out for donation requests. Um, a big one that we just got was um, a $500 donation to cover the cost of bags for a race giveaway. So just kind of filling out those forms really helps get donations for a race giveaway and kind of elevates the race, if you will. Um, and then the face also has a lot of artwork about um, about the face injury community, what faces, that kind of stuff. So um, I'm also getting those printed on signs, which then will go throughout the um, layout of the race, kind of where check-in is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then that is also something that's really good to be used either in future years, for example, even if it's at a conference, but also in a way to be passed around the country, if you will, where it can also go to other events in future years or um, other races. And then I've there's also a lot of different places if you're really trying to promote the event that you can promote it from. For example, around here and all throughout the country are a big one is running clubs. There's a like a bunch of running clubs um, throughout the country and a lot probably near you. And they're generally like really supportive of these kind of smaller events or um, events that support a specific community or non-for-profit. And so they'll normally help 
advertise it, or even just come run in it. And then the other thing that I'm doing specifically for my project is I'll be using scouts and other families to run the event. But, you know, because of that, and based on like some of the requirements of what I'm doing, um, I'm also going to be making instructions for like how to kind of do each step, as well as um, kind of each station throughout the race. So for example, maybe it's like a water table check and that kind of thing. And so if you're hosting an in-person event that um, I'm happy to give you give to you, and it'd be also really helpful for just kind of, even if it's um, just materials. So, you know, kind of overall with that, um, I'm super excited and glad to see how many captains there are for this fall. Um, and even though, you know, this, what I'm talking about, considering it's only like some of what I've been doing, um, it may seem like a lot, but to be completely honest, I've been able to do it while in school, running track, playing sports, et cetera. And so, you know, as much or as little as you can do is great to be completely honest. So that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, I was going to just do a virtual event this year. Um, but I, you know, I, I kind of liked the, the idea of like getting together, at least with my immediate family. So, um, after hearing about Ryan, I, you know, I saw on Instagram that somebody was having like a smaller walk at a local rec center, um, which we go to all the time and has this great one mile trail. Um, so mine is strictly not a run. It is a walk because of the, the venue we picked, but it's a trail through the woods that's paved so you can bring strollers um, or it's accessible. Um, you know, it's much, it's even so people can walk on it um, very easily. Um, and I'm just doing, I got a donation for water from Wawa and Wegmans, um, a gift card so I can buy some granola bars. Um, and we're just going to do a, a, a one mile walk through the woods um, and hopefully get, you know, a few dozen people, uh, friends, family, um, and some other face families in the area to come out. Um, I'm not doing a giveaway. Um, I decided that I didn't want to figure out the logistics of that. Uh, but that's all to say, like, you can make the event what you want um, in terms of how big or small it is. Um, and I think between us and with Maureen's experience in the past, we do have, um, we can certainly help people figure out, like, what could work um, if you have ideas. Um so one thing is like, what does it mean to be a captain? Um, the most important thing is that you just recruit people to participate. So you'll send um, an email or post to social media, or maybe um, depending on you know how large of an event you want, you could make a flyer. Um, you know, I plan to send an email to friends, family, neighbors, and say, hey, join my team. Or if you can't make it that day, um, you know, you could join virtually by dedicating you know a run or walk during Race for Face Week to our team. Or if that's not your thing, which I have plenty of friends who it's not, um, you know, we would really like a donation. And so I had people who participated in lots of different ways last year in terms of just dedicating a run, making a donation, sponsoring it. We have different levels. Um, and then the other thing is to post or share, you know, your experience and your story, both with the race for face and um, with face syndrome, like whatever it is you're comfortable with, but it's a really, it's a great time to raise awareness and um, just let people know more about your journey. And I think everybody's um, sort of experience is so different that it is really valuable to have um, different families share whatever it is they're willing to share um, in whatever way they can. Um, and this is one of the couple times a year we have sort of dedicated where people can do that. So those are the main sort of pieces um, if you are a captain um, and you can really decide, you know, how how big you want to make it based on what you can take on um, this year. Um, some important logistics, The we have a week, the sep September 7th to the September 15th. Um, Ryan and I are both going to do the in-person part of our events on that last day, the 15th, but you can do it um, the weekend before or even, you know, during the week. Uh, I think we had somebody last year that got together after school with some like school classmates and they went for a walk around the block and that was their race for face. Um, so it can look a lot of different ways depending on sort of what your, what your weeks, what your life looks like. Um, 
But the face injury community can also support you. Um, and Maureen um, is going to share a little bit more. We've kind of touched on some things, but um, she can share a little bit more about what we can do. Sure. There's so many different ways that we can help. Um, we can, first of all, create a web page for you. And that would allow you to have some personal information on there. So Ryan, um, we've been working on his Chicagoland webpage. And he actually sent me a video talking about why he's doing a race for face and a little bit um, about him and his Eagle Scout project. Um, it obviously gives, you know, his specific race location and a map of where, you know, everyone should be parking. Um, I even where I was able to plug in some great pictures of his brother, Connor. Um, so there are, you know, a lot of different things that we can do on the web page. And what we would do is send you a Google form with some, you know, questions and you would fill them out. And that's, you know, then we could work together on your page if you want something changed or something added. Um, we also will have a Google Drive that will be, um, a, you can access the tools that we would have for you. And those tools would be a handbook. They would be um, email templates that you can send out to friends and family. Um, it would, they would have, you know, the race for face logo, maybe any other form letters that you might be um, needing if you're going to ask for donations um, from companies or from, uh, like Jeannie had said, she ended up getting um, some donations for water and some snacks. Um, I also, I had, um, I think Ryan or Jeannie said something about making a flyer and you know, I'm thinking if somebody doesn't know how to do that, that might be feeling overwhelming, but we could make a flyer for you. Um, if that is something that you want to do that you could distribute to your friends and family. We also would create Facebook events on our page that you can then share um, with your network of individuals. And um, as far as a registration form, we would personalize a registration form for you so that when people register, you would see automatically and right away who registers. Um, that are those are some ways that we could certainly support you. Um, I'm just making sure we hit everything. And, and again, if there's something else that you need, we could certainly, you know, help you with that. But that's like overall, that's the the way that we could help as an organization. Um, so I think we want to open it up if people have questions. Um, I know. I think everybody that has, we do have some repeat captains, but I think they were not able to make it. Uh, anybody has question? <laughs> and you can also um, email uh, Maureen or myself. Um, some of you did get an email from me, I think inviting you or asking you to join as a captain. So you should have my contact information as well. Um, do you have any suggestions for like race venues? Yeah. So race venues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I initially wasn't going to do one cause I was, I couldn't figure that out. Um, so I'm doing a, it's a rec center at the County runs and it, they have, and it has trails. And so I actually just went to like Fairfax County permits and it was like pretty, obvious once I went there what I would need to do because it had like oh if you have a walk or a run I will say it was confusing because it said like oh you have to get this type of permit and then we'll take 15 percent of your revenue and I was like well what's the point of doing a fundraiser if like you're gonna take money so I just sent an email and they responded like within 30 minutes and we're like oh no you're exempt from that if as long as you show us like this documentation um so I think like the county um or like whatever your locality is, if they have sort of any kind of public places can be a good place to, to look and see what their requirements are. Um, I just had to, there are certain areas that like had an extra fee and certain ones that didn't. And so actually the person worked with me to figure out like where I wanted to start it that was like, didn't require a fee, um, but she knew was like a good place. Um, and so I, I think like reaching out to whoever, like the locality that you work in um, is a good place to start. And like Ryan said, around them, there's forest preserves. Um, I know other people have used, like if you have any connections to churches or private schools or like things like that, that have bigger, I don't. Um, so that wasn't an option for me. Um, 
What other types of venues that people? I, I was going to say even our public school, our track. As soon as I start talking, my dogs love barking. Um, we could use the track at the school possibly. That's always an option. Um, the other option is like we have a park by us, like just a local park, and they have a little trail. Um, and the and the other option that you could do is go on the web website, run run the day, and see like you could put in like your location, and it'll come up with all the five Ks that are in your area. Um, in the handbook, the one idea that we have is to use a trail that's already been done or an event, um, you know, a course that's already been done. So you're not reinventing the wheel. And again, like Jeannie said, she's doing just a one mile walk. Ryan's doing both a 5K and a one mile walk. Um, we try not to really emphasize like the 5K because I think that can sound overwhelming for individuals, but you can even do it through, right through your neighborhood. You know, if you have a neighborhood and you want to, you know, walk through that way, as long as everybody is safe, we try to make this, and it sounds like there's like, it is, it's a huge spectrum of how you can do your event, right? You could walk through your neighborhood and just make it a fun event. And I know that in Pittsburgh, I think it was last, last year or two years ago, um, they just walked through the neighborhood and then um, Jerry Laufer, who organized the event, she just had a, a, like a big sort of like gathering at her house afterwards. Um, and so that worked really well for her. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other recommendations. We did last year. It wasn't like, it wasn't technically an in-person race, but some of the people, like my, it was my parents, my in-laws, some cousins. And we just, my dad went early in the morning and got like the first come first serve park shelter um, or shelter at like a park. And we got, then we just did a 10 yard dash, like right there. Um, Cause again, like, my daughter's so young, like we're not doing a 5k. <laughs> um, the, the mile I think is going to be a stretch. Um, so and for Jeannie, us, I think we had like a 20 people total that came to that. Um, I think that's a good point though, Jeannie. I think you have to like know who your, um, your community is, right? Like if you're asking, you know, a handful of friends and family and they're not like runners and they're not like 5kers doing a one mile walk is fantastic. Um, thanks. Thanks Shane. Thanks, Shane you know, doing something like a one mile walk, like really you can make this event, um, you can really format it to what your your group would need. Um, if you have a lot of runners in your group, then a 5K might be, you know, fun. You could still like even walk it. So I'm not sure if that helps you, but those are just some ideas. No, that's super helpful, thank you. Yeah, uh, it also, I think just kind of depends on the size of, you know, whatever, like the scale that you're trying to do with your event. Um, like, uh, Jeannie said, and I did earlier, um, force reserves here are a big one. If you're trying to do something larger, um, they're like pretty large, um, and there's a lot of them. So those are basically, um, at least, um, near us in Chicago. And I think a lot of the Midwest really, it's just getting a permit to like be able to organize the run and then fundraise there. Um, but if it's going to be a smaller scale, just doing something at a park or even still at a forest reserve and just, you know, going on a run or doing the 10 yard dash, that's also an easy location to do it. Anybody else have questions? Um, I think that's all we had planned, but, uh, I think we will be in touch, um, when registration opens. Um, I know September seems like it's far away. I think when I did this last year, I didn't reach out to anybody until August. Um, but I'm going to reach out sooner this year. Cause now I'm, I want to do more than I did last year. Um, but we'll be in touch and definitely like reach out to us if you have questions or you you think you should have heard something and you haven't um because <laughs> we want to be helpful um and i think you know this is a really fun event and it's a great way to connect with people um and so i'm really excited that we have quite a few new people on board this year
That's great. Thanks, Jeannie. Thanks so much. Um, what we can do is again, like Jeannie said, we'll just, we'll follow up with you all and see if you're still interested after you heard all this, we hope we didn't scare anybody away. <laughs> this sounds great. Um, thanks Caitlin. It was nice meeting everybody. Willow, it was nice meeting you. Amanda, nice meeting you as well. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thank good night. You. Thank good you night. too. Bye. All right. See ya. Bye.